All right. The Visiting Artist Program, funded by PAFA's Graduate Program, brings an outstanding roster of local, national, and international artists to PAFA each semester for lectures, critiques, and workshops. The program exposes students and the public to a range of artistic approaches and fosters discussion about contemporary art and ideas. This afternoon, we are pleased to have Doa Lee joining us. Jo Doa Lee is an interdisciplinary artist based in Philadelphia. She was born and raised in Seoul, South Korea. She earned her MFA from the University of Pennsylvania and her BFA with a concentration in painting and printmaking at the School of Art Institute in Chicago. In her work, she explores and utilizes cultural symbols through repetition in a practice that mediates on cultural translation, immigration, otherness, and femininity and focusing more specifically on issues of self-identification. Self she is interested in how the ways children speak, listen, see, draw, and reveal their developing identities. She investigates how their relationships, as well as socio-political socio and cultural pressures, become influencing points in the development of those identities. Her artwork has been featured in exhibitions in Virginia, Chicago, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Los Angeles, and Seoul, South Korea. She has been a resident artist at the Vermont Studio Center and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. She is a curator and co-director of the artist-run exhibi exhibition space F. Jord Gallery and currently teaches at Haverford School and Flesher Art Memorial. Please give, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Doa. You may now begin sharing your screen. Um, thank you so much for everyone coming here tonight. I'm really excited to share my art with you. Um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, let me see. Okay, here we go. So now I'm gonna start. Okay, so my name is Doa Lee. Um, when I think about this lecture, since this is for MFA student, I wanted to start um, my first slide with my first, um, the work that I made when I was first year in MFA. <laughs> um, and then um, the work will be shown throughout like how my work has been developed. Um, so again, this is the work that I made when I was first year in MFA at Penn. Um, this work, I documented, archived are the small drawing that I made uh, when I got bored or consciously, unconsciously, I just want to just try to make some kind of imageries. And then I photo document of them and then projecting this into big scale of this uh, kind of and creating this mixed media drawing. And for the materials, I use um, the materials that I got assigned or learned throughout the our school programs. I think there's some kind of hierarchy that we in throughout our education, we start learning holding the pencil and then using color pencil watercolor and acrylic oil and printmaking, etc. So throughout like um, me uh, personally going through this art school program, I wanted to kind of like archive art like what I've been went through. So in order to make this piece, I start with the pencil. I follow the order of the material that I got used, um, got, I got introduced. After this, I documented of each part of this work and then um, make this work out of the photo that I make. Um, and then stitch them um, with the shower curtain that I used to use. So now this is like unusable. This is um, useless. <laughs> um, I cannot using the shower curtain anymore, but I put them together and making another second work out of it. I think when I'm looking back this, I, I think that's kind of uh, my journey that I question a lot about the education system. Uh, how education um, for me constructing our view, our perspective, and I'm still questioning and still researching what education is like kind of big foundation for my work. Um, and then um, also I made this kind of research grab artist book. Um, inside you can see small like papers that I kind of show you how to developing like kind of value system, like drawing, 101 um, and there's a pencil mark or brush stroke like mark making that I love throughout the art system. Um, just talking about my background a little bit. Since I was little, I always wanted to be artist. Um, 
so I choose my care really early, and then I um, went to our school, our middle school and high school in Korea. Um, I really like appreciate, and I know it's privilege to access to those education, but I think the school that I went through was very rigid and strict um, or fashion art school. So we train a lot like hours, hours in a day to, um, you know, mastering, rendering, how to make re realistic um, imagery. Um, so I got really bored. Like, I mean, I was really excited to learning art this technique, but then at the end I was like, I do not want to do this anymore because they, it was kind of learning, kind of like Olympic game. We have to like, there's a test every month and then they grading our work by numbers and they ranking it. So I think throughout going through this kind of strict art school, I wanted to get out of it. So I will start admiring um, abstract painting. So that's why I, I wanted to escape from Korea and I moved to America and started making like, I do not want to make this realistic object or you know, painting drawings anymore. And I started making um, abstract image, images. And I was really a big fan of non-objective abstraction movement and expressionism and making the images um, that I do not want to, to creating any recognized images. I wanted to make a pure abstract work. So I was into art. So no more like judgment about a good art. I wanted to make a really bad art and what is like judgment, what is like work should be about. So I was really play around the materials. Um, you can see I uh, threw some of like plaster um, image on top of my painting and just play around, just like having fun. Um, but then I started questioning myself, like why I am so resist about the images. Am I be able to, before I always say no images, I do not want it to bring any imagery, but then I will start questioning why, why I'm so resistant against um, the image culture. So, um, and then also um, start questioning about painting. I've been, um, throughout like being so much like long time in art education and schooling, I start thinking about question like why I'm painting on campus. And suddenly I just thought that um, the campus, like just looking at campus, I feel like it's so architectural. I do not want it to be relying on this system. So I kind of start playing around and then you can see the flip side of heart. So some kind of corona images slowly coming into my art. But again, like thinking about the format, what kind of image I'm making or how I'm communicating this image with the viewer. Um, so again, this is the kind of work that I play with the um, canvas how I can share my image. I do not want it to rely on what does canvas mean um, and kind of play around outside of the box a little bit. And this is the work that I, um, the last work that I painted on canvas. Um, when I was in MFA for two years, I feel, I felt very isolated from the world. I, um, and also like maybe you also feel that way too. But you know, we spend so much time in white cube, white studio space, just sleeping in the apartment and then commuting by taking bus or biking and spending our day in like my white studio space and coming back and sleeping, go back. And I just feel like start questioning where are the images that I made gonna go? Um, who's consuming? Oh, what is for? What kind of thing that I'm like, you know, creating? What kind of dialogue I'm communicating with the viewer? Um, and then when I just looking at the window through the bus when I'm commuting, I start questioning my relationship with the viewer and the other energy culture that I see outside of my window. Um, are the fashion store, the way they decorating the you know store, and the street art or the spread art that you know are the images outside on the street and are the images that I'm making in my studio and hanging in the gallery space or another white cube. Um, so I started like kind of slowly, um, maybe because of that, um, I started using house paint, questioning a lot about framing it, painting on canvas. And as you can see some of the mixed media, um, the info here, I slowly start using spray paint spray paint become um, important material for me and then start using house paint. And this is the work um, 
again, um, after I feel so much isolated from like my word, my artwork from the outer, um, I heard the news about the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson. Um, so after I made that, uh, after I heard the story and feeling so much isolation, um, I don't know how, but I, I, one day I came to studio and make this piece. Um, so it's kind of obvious you can see like black silhouette leg and then um, the shadow with the cop with the gun shooting the heart um, and then this is the window photo from my basement that I took and I feel it with that so this is kind of window but it can be referenced about you know gun shooting the hole um, so this is kind of work that I guess like looking back start making some imagery on uh, what's going on around me and then this is the, the last piece that I made on canvas. And after that, I um, started making painting without stretching on canvas. So I started dyeing my fabric and then stitching them with the digital fabric design that I made, uh, stitching them together, play with spray paint, just play around with mixed media materials and then um, just like get away from the stretchy canvas and give them a little more freedom. Um, me, I consider myself as a traveler. So this canvas kind of become like, like I think close to my character. They are easy to carry. Um, I just need to restretch every time when I have an installation since there's not stretch on. So I try to, instead of getting away from architectural kind of canvas um, frame, I guess they are more organic and giving a new life every time they're traveling to new space. And this is another work, um, Forever Untitled. Um, this work is the first um, painting that this imagery, you can see the hand figure, a hand cutting, um, the index finger is cut out. This is the imagery that I made. And I think the first painting that I started using this uh, imagery that I created, um, I was thinking a lot about uh, the time that I've been went through when I came to state um, and when someone tried to take a photo of me, I always making a victory sign, uh, the peace sign. Um, this is just culture that I grew up in Korea. Like, you know, when someone take a photo of you, you smile, naturally you smile. So for me, it's just like, a, you know, it's not peace sign anymore. It's just like smiling. That's a culture that I grew up. But when I come to state, um, I noticed about my otherness I'm, and I was the only one who's making the sign. So I got embarrassed because my friend was always like asking me, Doa, why you're making that sound every single time? And I was like, oop, I'm the only one who's doing that. So I paid so much attention to stop doing that gesture. And now I'm not doing that anymore. And looking back, I was thinking like, oh, I, you know, in order to fit into new culture, I changing myself. So I think this symbol are um, kind of like, reference my like transition into, in order to fit into new culture. So I, in cutting my index finger. So I lost my body, um, sacrifice part of my body in order to fit in. But then I also wear the sign is kind of, you know, kind of aggressive way, kind of fuck you. So I was, you know, for me, I'm the first audience of my imagery. So maybe I'm fuck you to myself where I'm fucking to the audience. Um, it's really up to, you know, people how what they're looking at, but I always like say that it's just like imagery cutting out my index finger. Um, so that's kind of images that are coming into my art. Um, and also I think I made this work because I was really frustrated with um, the questions that I got in school. I was again, really into abstract painting. Um, but every time when I have a critique, people are always reference, try to make a reference from my background, where I'm coming from. Um, like, have you look at the Korean traditional color or, have, well, you know, even though the other students who make similar like object painting, they never got those questions. But I was the only one who um, always connected with where I'm coming from. So somehow I feel like embarrassed because at the time I was not, um, interesting in Korean painting at all. 
so because I didn't know, I felt kind of shame. But then later I got a little upset that like, why my art cannot be now I have total different definition of a, a universe but I was frustrated that my work cannot be universe like how can I be just artists without um you know uh, introduced as Asian women or Asian artists um so I got upset and and then frustrated um and then I think uh, after like days in my studio, I make this work and um, you can see some of like houses kind of try this way to rendering the flowers. Um, and then also the frame does is a kind of flip side of Asian Chinese like um, painting frame that I was referencing. So I was making this work after like um, for days of struggle. And then this is another painting that I made, um, Prison Absent. This work is a kind of also first work that um, the Sailor Moon, the animation character, and then yellow emoji like faces and also this sewing lady um, appear in my work. Um, this sewing lady, if you're around Philly, maybe you are familiar with this imagery, but this is the image that I find on the street around the cleaning shop. Um, and I noticed, um, even though I'm a just visitor outsider from this, uh, from the state, I noticed that um, the cleaning or uh, the repair store is one of the biggest Korean immigrant families business in this country. And then um, every time when I walk past by the store, I find interesting that to looking at this, lady and who's working inside of this that window um and who's reference who's uh, representing their labor and kind of mixing representation of their labor so i start um using this images and start developing kind of new work that um the title re Arter and repair um i just took a photo of them and then the framing is also part of work so I um, took a frame courses to make this frame, but and then inside the frame and inside this like frame window frame. Um, so that's I kind of interesting in the the imagery and who's representing their labor inside that space. And then this is in progress work that I'm working right now um, around the Philly. I um, take a photo of the window images and I for me I giving them kind of individuality so for me I'm taking kind of the archiving the um cell portrait image of each person <laughs> and then title for the store name so it's gonna be hundreds but if you see me biking around taking photo that's what I'm doing uh, to archiving or this um alteration repair store around Philly and back to my uh, painting, um, this is the work that I made. Um, one of the biggest uh, installation piece um, is over 300 long piece um, and title is likable. I, um, when you see, um, I'm not sure I can zoom, but um, you can see from the left to the right, there's a crying baby cake and the hand gesture which is like um, kind of Korean trendy way to making a hard love sign, not about looking for money. <laughs> um, and then the cake with 25 and Pac-Man. And then as I explained the hand gesture about cutting the index finger and then the blue men were like person holding like heart sign and then um, like copy cup. And I didn't know there's gonna be COVID because I make this work 2016, but you can see the mask <laughs> here um, and the high hill, um, red high hill. And then the right is um, with the baby holding, I love you. Um, the idea of this work was start with, um, again, my frustration with my communication mechanism uh, living in outside of my homeland 
I have to learn in the languages and sometimes because it's not my first language, I don't know, I sometimes miss what they're saying and I do not want it to make awkward moments. So I just like smile. Sometimes I don't know what they're saying, but I just smiling. Um, and then coming back home, I feel so frustrated because that smile is so empty. Um, and then next time I always remind Doa, do not smile, just like say, I don't understand, but always, again, I feel like intimidated and smiling. And I noticed that, that this is my surviving mechanism in this country and start questioning what, how uh, this smiling become my survival tool instead of um, speaking up or instead of being aggressive. Um, how, how this likable me, how my are the gesture smiling, um, being like kind of cuteness, um, like what is what is like likable me? So I just start with actually the title likable and then make this piece. And next slide, you can see kind of scale up this work. And then after this, I make um, the installation piece, I love you too. Um, growing up in 90s, I watching a lot of like drama and movies and always now I believe that everything's getting changed, but always like women are kind of passive. Like the women should be waiting the men's like first, you know, move. Um, or like if you're smart enough, you should be know how to make the guys make first move. Um, so you have to wait. So, and then I also feel like I do not like that, but I feel somehow I'm playing that role in my work. So why, my communication dynamic in, the, in between genders, why I love you too, become my language instead of saying I love you. So that is like work that I made. You can see I love you too on her pillows around on top of this baby photo, baby holding I love you um, on the air bed. And then next work is um, the three color screen print images. Um, title Lady How Can Expire. Um, in the center, you can see this, um, the box inside this box to sun, crowd, flower. I call this, um, you can see this imagery a lot throughout my work, but I call this as childish landscape. Um, so this is the center and then you can see cheesecake, Pengman is looking at the cheesecake, following them and the organic um, paper. Um, giving you instruction how to make heart. And there, and then there's two cheesecake on um, 2535. Um, that's the kind of first work that I make. Um, 2535 number coming into my work. Um, for the next slide, I can explain more, but um, cheesecake, I altering the, in the photo culture, um, pinup girl style sexualized photo images called um, call as cheesecake photo. And then like guy, who, puffing guy was called as a beefcake. So I was altering women's body into cake and putting them to holding 2535. Um, the reason why I was interested in 2535 was um, there's an interesting anecdote behind, again, like I'm a 90s kid. So <laughs> um, growing up in 90s, I, not much about it affected to, to me, but I remember when I was little, uh, like people was compare women's um, marriage value with Christmas cake. In Korea, Christmas is a holiday, but also it's a day for, for a couple. Couple buy a uh, cake to celebrate their relationship. So that's a day a lot of people buy cake. So it means that, and then they apply that like after 25, after the Christmas, nobody buy cake anymore. So in order to sell, you have to price down um, or, you know, so so there was comparing women's and marriage value, um, value in marriage market with the cake. And then, um, but after I grew up, nobody using this term anymore. But then I think 2016, around the election time, um, I read the article that Trump said, 35 is checkout time for women. Uh, I'm not interested about the political side, but I was really interested that like, wow, even though like 10 years, like gen 
next generation, still they are some kind of inspiration day for women. Um, so I was really interested in revisiting the, the story that I used to hear when I was little and make this piece. So I titled 25 as the last fresh cake and then 35 as the new inspiration date. Um, and then you can see that again, like for me, I see this as cake for the women's nude, women's figures and holding, I'm 25, another was 35 and there's a knife next to each cake. So they're ready for your consumption. Um, they're ready for your violation. Um, that is about this piece. And then after I made this, I make another 10 series of the cake and I titled them as the hottest cake, hottest cheesecake. So, you know, like are the media, they're always absent with the young age. Um, younger has more power. Um, they're always absent with like young 20s women. And if that is true, then yes, uh, 20 is the hottest cake. Um, so I was just interested in the dynamic about aging. Um, in our society. And I wanted to give them kind of like individuality. So they are pretty like big scale um, kind of human figures um, you can see throughout this um, installation view and on other images um, that I made. But again, they are always like, it's celebratory. Um, they're welcoming you and also they're ready for your consumption. So you can always see the knife next to each cake. And um, this slide is the exhibition, uh, my solo exhibition at Practice Gallery. I titled at Chinatown Sailor Moon and the work in the center, uh, I titled that as Yellow Face, Yellow House. This work, I um, basically it's a house <laughs> um, out of a lot of yellow emojis. Um, I just wanted to make my own house to store myself, my soul, my artwork. I was, I think at the time I was, um, my, tried to change my visa. I used to have student visa, um, but then I finished my MFA and I tried to apply artist visa and I have to try to prove myself how much I'm, uh, you know, worth it for this country to stay or how much I'm a great artist by paper, not from by from the artwork. So I have to go through, prepare a lot of document. And then I start kind of um, feel down a little bit because I don't know how to prove myself in word. <laughs> I don't know how to promoting myself, how much I'm a good artist. And also if you're staying in your country, nobody asks your worthiness, how much you were worth it to stay, you know, to leave the the place that you wanted to be belong where you feel you wanted to stay. So going through that, I feel um, kind of like unsettling and frustrating and conflicts and where it belongs. I'm here, but I feel I'm, I shouldn't be here. So um, just one day I just wake up like, well, I just wanted to make a house so I can store myself. Um, and you can see for um, kind of detailed view, um, you can see the sewing lady be, and then a lot of emojis behind. And then the rainbow window, there's a lot of heart sign. Again, this is like Korean style saying love. Um, so there's a lot of love, a lot of love for the viewers. Um, and then again, with the hand, with the image, and then the finger, my losing my lost fingers here. And then there's window, um, the mirror inside. So you can see the reflection when you come close, you can see you. Um, so, and there also, again, like there's a lot of hands and love. Um, and then after this, I also made this, again, kind of same um, topic that I was dealing with. Um, the title is Say You're Worth It. Um, I think this is the painting that it took a long time to finish. I started this 2017 and I finished last year. Um, I started this work, um, again, a little frustrating, um, just like, you know, try to prove my worthiness. And also because a lot of, at the time, a lot of political situation, my lawyer was suggest me, 
uh, you know, like just even though you're, I know you're stay here legally, but do not travel outside the state. Um, so even though I walking in the state freely, I feel somehow I'm in a prison. I cannot travel outside. It's not, you know, safe for me, like, which should be safe. So somehow I feel trapped. It. Um, in the beginning, when I make this, I was in the residency in Chattenham and I just documenting the shadow uh, from my studio space, the, uh, the window shadow coming from my um, wall. But then, so this, this black window is actually the shadow of the window from my studio, but then it become kind of gate or trapping um, for this Pac-Man. And when you see clothes, um, or so in the bottom here, there's a mask. Again, I didn't know there would be COVID, but the mask is around in my, my painting a lot. Um, and then because I don't know, because of topic, I was really tiring or it was emotionally really drained to make this work. So I have to just leave for a while. But then last year, I feel like I need to finish this one and move, move uh, from here. So that's why it took a little longer than the other works. Um, and then I'm ready to move to next. Um, so that's the work about. And this is the work um, kind of soft sculpture that I titled Chinese Eye. I printed out Mulan's eye and make this sculpture. Um, the Mulan is Disney character, first Asian character made by Disney. Um, the short anecdote about this was um, my friend was saying one day, Doa, you have really pretty Chinese eyes. And I know what she meant by that. Um, you know, she just compliments like you have pretty eyes. But I got really interested in the terminology that she used because I'm not Chinese, but I know what she meant. Like maybe she meant about you have pretty Asian eyes or something. Um, but then I was curious, um, she was white. So if she, her eyes pretty, and if I wanted to compliment back to her, should I say to her, like you have pretty Caucasian eyes? where you have pretty Americanized, like what is worth for you uh, and what is for work like worth for me. So that was kind of like the inspired start I'm making this work in another Chinese side, um, putting the glasses uh, for her. Um, again, I'm still interested in the perception, how you see yourself. Um, when I um, stay with like in host family, um, my host family had a um, daughter who was around five and they just adopted the cat. And, and then she put like this gesture um, while she's playing with the cat and say, Doa, this is your eyes. And that was my first time someone did that to me. And she's only five. So I was wondering that, um, you know, is it really she, like my eyes looking like that? That's the way how people perceive my eyes or um, where this is culture is structured. Um, I was just getting um, interesting in this like terminology and start making this work, series of the work. And um, also I start kind of play with the word um, I using the uh, pronunciation symbol. Um, and this, um, the letter means hated like love. Um, person who is uh, staying like staying in the country as foreigner or as outsider sometimes you know it's easy to be targeted and again my survivor mechanism of being like smiling um and I always feel somehow unsettling feel like at the edges um and also growing up in Korea um there's a lot of like tension in between North and South Korea and always they're fighting each other. Um, but at the end, I just feel like hater or so like love, you know? So I was thinking about dynamic in between this like tensions and I using um, the pronunciation symbol because I know English is the right now the most universal language, but if that is true, I feel pronunciation symbol is the most universal language so everyone can speak this together. Um, so that's why I use this. Um, and then um, fabulous is not fabulous. Um, this is another text art that I made. 
um, fabulous uh, this FOB is then for fresh up the boat. Um, so maybe people know that um, this FOB was using a lot in between Asian and American culture in the United States. Um, when I, you know, first year in college, tried to learn the culture and language, um, my friend told me that though I your fob and I'm Twinkie. She, she was Korean American. And I was like, okay. Um, so it was easy. I don't, I didn't see that as like racist like term or it was just easy to categorize or easy to say your background. Um, so I accept that, okay, I'm fob. But then like after finishing college, I, you know, nobody told me I'm fob. <laughs> so I was like start lost or like felt distant from fob. But then one day my friend, um, we went to bar together and he was saying like, I dated a girl, like she was fob like you. Mm -hmm. And and then like after that comment, I was like, oh wow. Like even though 10 years later, I'm still fob. So I started revisiting this term um, and using this fob a lot. Um, and this is my first piece. And this is another installation that I use with the fabulous, it's not fabulous. And then, um, also putting the t-shirts that um, I using the asterisk, asterisk symbol and put the alphabet on the t-shirts. And then this is become another, the serious work that I made about the alphabet. This is the series of the drawing that I made. And then you can see another, um, the I hate alphabet series. Uh, me, um, again, like coming to stay Learning, learning the languages and you know going through our, the art schooling, I wasn't really frustrated communicating and also see that there's a lot of hierarchy um, and you know power dynamic in between languages. Um, so for me, one day I was really frustrated. So I write in my studio, I hate alphabet. And then I was feel like embarrassed, like, no, 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 like you should learn and um, you should feel embarrassed that your English is not good. So I have to study harder, but then I feel again intimidated. So I are turning the head um, uh, into the asterisk symbol. So kind of hiding. Um, so I went through this like, and then when I think about this kind of emotional, you know, my response to this like kind of hierarchy of language dynamics in this society, I was like, I got very interested in um, this topic. So I started making this um, drawing every single day for a hundred. Um, and then just briefly, the way how I make this work is I using a pencil and covering the um, the paper. And then again, the childish landscape that I was referring, I draw this uh, childish drawing landscape and then using a, a eraser to creating these letters. And then I signed the day, um, but not from the date that we are using. I um, signed the date of uh, the ruler calendar based on the ruler calendar days. Um, I uh, signed every single day that I made based on the ruler calendar. Um, so this is kind of like process. And you can see every day I'm making three letters. One is alphabet. Uh, after I finish alphabet, I using pronunciation symbol alphabet, and then I creating hate alphabet and then I creating uh, or turning the hate into asterisk and then creating the final alphabet. So that's kind of my own way of my response to the language um, and also think a lot about the education. So pencil is kind of foundation of our education system. So, and the erasing is also important component for this uh, work. Uh, I post this every day for my Instagram so people can see it like live, my interaction, um, the way how I spend the day. <laughs> um, and this is an installation um, photo for this piece, as you can see. And then I prepare for my last slide with the video piece that I made. Um, the title is In and Out Colors. Um, we can watch this together. It's only like less than a minute. Um, but again, like um, I guess my work become a lot about what it means to live in this society as Asian women. Um, I start aware of my otherness, my skin color. Oops, 
sorry, um, skin color. So um, as you already like kind of like see the crayon, I giving them as individuality um, and then they're on the stage. Maybe we should watch this together first. Um, I will play this. Um, so, yeah, so um, uh, for me, when I'm looking at this crayon, um, I have a lot of mixed feelings because in Korea, you know, every color has their own name, like red, green, we giving a name for green. Um, in Korea, when I was growing up, um, they calling this crayon as skin color. So the name of this color is skin color. Um, and I raised my art teacher, told me though I using skin color for your body whereas for you know when I draw it's like figure they always say oh using skin color but then later when the Korea getting more like diverse um somebody sued the crayon company and then company cannot using um skin color anymore so now they title this color as pale orange or pale yellow or something like that um so for me I because I was growing up you know as, as calling this color as skin color, it was really hard to change in the term. Um, so I have to pay attention. And then now when I come into the state, there's whole new, you know, story uh, related with the skin color um, and then aware about my otherness. So I, again, like my interest in, uh, with this like complex connection with the crayon and the skin color, what it means, um, especially I have really dark skin in Korea, but then in, in America and like, I'm not like, they consider like, no, no, you're, you're okay. So those like a beauty standard is like really interesting. So that is my kind of inspiration. And this is the slide that I prepared for tonight's lecture. Um, but now if you have any question, I'm happy to answer. Um, and then I can stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Doa. That was wonderful. Yeah, if you if anyone has any questions, um, please take a moment and type them in the chat and we'll relay them to Doa. Let's see. I have a comment from Chris. They said interesting that the truncated peace sign also looks like a smoking gun. Um. And <laughs> And then they also asked, um, I'm curious how you dye your canvas. What type of dye do you use? I uh, use various of dye materials. Sometimes I do natural dye uh, using the, collecting the onion, on, onions, um, uh, onion spray materials to use. And then also I just collecting um, or buy in our store to the, you know, using the pigment. Um, Sometimes I use just acrylic paint and then um, just painting and with the water and then bleaching them. So I use it multiple and so many like kinds of, you know, dyeing materials. Awesome. And then uh, one thing that I wanted to add is like, um, it took a lot of process, dye my fabric. And then after that, I have to iron for hours and hours. So, um, and then stretching the canvas a little bit, framing it and then painting. Um, but I really enjoy iron um, because again, I, even though I'm not immigrant um, from immigrant family, um, I feel so much attached with the Korean immigrant, you know, people in this society. So every time when I walk past by, I wonder if I was born in this country, what if so? Uh, because of that attachment or so 
it applied to domestic like labor of the the women's ironing. So I really do enjoy, and sometimes I feel like my studio is actually um, sewing company instead of like painting studio because I'm because I'm iron so much. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, Jill says, I am so blown away by your presentation and the amount of work you've made in such a short span of time. Do you ever collaborate with other artists? Like for the house piece, your pieces seem like there could have been five people working on them. Um, that piece are actually, um, I, 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 I love to do collaborating with other artists, um, but that piece I, was actually a studio assistant, um, the, uh, the artist Emily Shelf, uh, Sheldon, um, and I learned through her, uh, she taught me how to do stained glass. Stained glass was not my medium. So I learned from her and it is always like great to like work or watching how other artists working. So that's how I adapted. Um, so stained glass definitely, um, that was not my medium and also framing um, the repair and altering um, the piece. I don't know how to make a frame. So I took a, a, you know, classes for that piece and also photo archiving piece that I'm doing right now around the Philly area. That's a dark room photo that I actually really work in the dark room. And also photo is not my medium at all. So I feel like really frustrated sometimes because you have, when you switch a new medium, you have to learn and spend so much time to understanding new materials. But depending on the, um, the projects, I, I don't know, I feel like laboring is really big part of my work and uh, layering process time consuming. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm sometimes depending on the project I take courses learning the new uh, technique or materials in order to make that piece. Awesome, thank you. Um, UA says, do you usually plan out each piece or do you work more intuitively? What do you usually do if you're stuck on a piece? Um, so for, it's depending on the project for the photo, um, I have idea. So I take out darkroom classes and then start making that work. So for those kind of conceptual like idea um, driven work, I do plan, um, but I feel I find more freedom in painting. Painting, I sometimes I start from the title, from kind of like story or like something what I wanted to share with my viewer. Um, but then painting has more intuitive process even though you have some kind of thoughts throughout like make art making the idea can be very fluid so I do enjoy those like kind of make conceptual like driven piece versus like painting because it has more space to play with um, so depending on the um, the piece and when I stuck on piece I um, yeah, I, as an artist, I doubt a lot, like what I'm doing is, does it make sense? Um, Sometimes I don't know, but I think one way to get out of that cycle is just keep making art. <laughs> just keep making art, you never know, um, just keep making art. And sometimes in my studio, I just, I cry. I cry all day, getting emotional, and I have to having a, um, break from my studio. So sometime for a couple of months, I don't go to my studio. And then when I get the energy, I just spend all day uh, going crazy. And that yellow face, yellow house, I had idea and I make that piece in a month um, with learning the stained glass and everything. Uh, likeable, I make that piece in a, in a week. So sometime, and then sometime I work, uh, you know, multiple pieces together. So I can, so I can having a break when I got stuck, move to the next one and then revisit it. Um, that's how I make the say you're worth it painting. I was working and I need to, a psychological break. So I do not want to even look at the piece in my studio. So I, so I forward it and put it at the end of my corner um, in my studio space and then I revisit it. So it's kind of like in briefly, I think like it just tangling around my studio. Thank you. Um, Susan had a comment. They say, let me say how interesting your work is as art at the intersection of language and culture. So thought provoking. 
And then Chris has a question. They said the hate alphabet has so many layers, literal and figurative. Have you considered using the, the next level up media with these pieces, color, pencil, or paint? Um, so far, um, I would say pencil is the, I think the best medium for this piece. Maybe my idea can be changed, but um, for that piece, pencil and eraser is really important component for that for this piece. Like pencil is kind of foundation for education, art, you know, art education as well. Um, so I was interesting the structuring, where the structure, where the dynamic of language coming from, um, its relationship with the education system. Um, so that's why. I wanted to stick with the pencil and then creating an image by erasing, not the creating the images by pencil. You do all the mark making and then try to create this negative space by erasing. So um, for me right now, I think pencil and uh, eraser is it's kind of the medium that I wanted to use for that one. But I'm interesting about, um, I think that is also connected with the pre-making block printing um, process. So pre-making can be possible that I wanted to expand in that work so far, yeah. Thank you. Um, Adam says, I find it so fascinating to hear you talk about these major really serious issues like race and immigration while looking at your work, which appears more lighthearted at first glance. Do you intend for viewers to see these pieces as humorous? Um, I, for me, I think I can, uh, say like a likable piece. I know my painting especially is like, um, playful. They are cute. Um, I using Chinese medium crayon, um, and or, or pastel and spray paint using kind of Chinese imagery animation cartoon or character emojis. Um, so I know the the language that I'm using are very kind of childish, cute image to inviting a viewer to, I'm thinking a lot about my relationship with, with my viewer as like consumable. What is consumable mean? What is being choosable? Um, so I guess back to the question, yes, humor, a funny double meaning, again, the finger is not fuck you, it's like I just losing my you know, body part, but um, you know, there are so many ways to look at it. Um, I guess also that is my mechanism since I, living outside of my homeland, um, sometimes I doubt a lot about my ownership um, and my safe space. So sometimes I feel I'm hiding behind my images and I need to create in my own safe, you know, space from, you know, from the viewer who's gonna judge me. Um, art making is, I believe that is very intimate connection that I'm trying to make with the viewer. Uh, you're always being vulnerable by sharing, putting yourself out there. So, and then I believe that there's power of being vulnerable, but I guess this double meaning creating kind of cute, funny, pretty imagery are my kind of mask on what's inside and creating safe space for me, for my art. All right, thank you. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to ask them at this time. Otherwise we will end this week's lecture. Give people a minute to, if they had any more questions. Um, I had a comment from Yue. Um, she said, I love and admire your work so much. I really appreciate how vulnerable you are with your art and it is very inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I think that is it. Um, so if we don't have any additional questions, we will conclude our program today. Once again, thank you all for attending this week's Visiting Artist Program Lecture. And we hope that you enjoyed the lecture and we will see you again in the fall. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.